So who in here has heard the name Michael Brown? Raise your hands. How about Tamir Rice? How about Dexter Luckett? Jasmine Ng. So the first two individuals made headlines. They were shot by police officers. The last two were also shot by police officers here in Los Angeles County. And what we tried to do is set out and take a, I guess, a, a forest level view, but also a tree by tree view of, of the situation that brings police officers to shoot other individuals uh, for whatever the reason. And we began this project back in April of 2015 um, with a public records request. We wrote a letter to the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office. We finally published a thing in November of 2015, seven months later. And in between, we, beca we became really, I guess, enamored, interested, uh, fascinated by more than 400 individuals who had run-ins with police officers that left them shot, and in some cases, many cases, killed. Um, our Officer Involved project came about in an attempt to get to know something about every time a police officer made the decision to use deadly force in Los Angeles County. We wanted to stop thinking about these things as a one-by-one, -one, day after day, maybe month after month, but separate instances, right, and get a, a picture of the thing as a whole. Other projects in Los Angeles have attempted to do this. Um, I think sometime in 2015, the top uh, image there is from NBCLA. Uh, they set out and actually got the same records we did and um, did some geographic analysis of officer-involved shootings in Los Angeles County. The bottom one is part of the LA Times homicide report project, and they have a filter on there that allows you to see every time that an individual was shot and killed by a police officer. But we wanted to do more than just the fatal incidents, right? We wanted to know about those who were, were just injured, right? Maybe paralyzed. Maybe their lives have been changed forever. And so we set out. And we got to know a lot of people, and those people became numbers, right? But in the end, we got to know the people behind those numbers. Um, and we learned one interesting thing. In 16 years, no officer has been prosecuted for shooting an individual in Los Angeles County. The last one was in September of 2000. So basically, I guess you could say we said about trying to provide context, right, to all these numbers. But what is context, right? It's finding typical or average situations. It's about finding central tendencies. It's about finding the outliers. And in order to arrive at that, we had to make some data, right? It wasn't something that was readily available. We had to make some handcrafted locally sourced artisanal data. So as we set out to do that, we learned California has some of the toughest laws in terms of privacy regarding police officers. The data that is available is scattered. It's largely focused only on fatal shootings and rarely contains the level of detail that we're looking for, right? Those individual interactions that led to shots being fired. And we came to realize that the only agency privy to all this is the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office. Every time that somebody is shot by a police officer in Los Angeles County, they send out a team of investigators to gather the facts and ultimately arrive at a decision on whether or not to prosecute, whether or not to charge a police officer. Every time they decline to charge a police officer, they create a letter. They write this letter to the police agency, they state the facts of the case, and they render a decision. We asked for these letters, and we got 400, 500 of them, right? Pieces of paper, photocopied, stapled together, that we had to try and figure out what was inside of them. So, being a tinkerer, I decided to do what tinkerers do and start tinkering. And I learned how our uh, photocopier worked, and I pulled a lot of staples, and got some paper cuts, and organized a bunch of things, and I built an application. And there's a program called Document Cloud that basically allows you to upload documents. It OCRs them. It pulls out various people, places, things, calls them entities. Um, but it also has an API, and so I leveraged that to pull it into an application that allowed us to go through and extract, I don't know, 85 different data points from each document. Um, thankfully, the documents were organized fairly um, routinely. Um, important information at the top, the same information at the end of the thing, and uh, we were able to kind of speed through them pretty good. So that took, oh, two, three, four months. And at the end of it, we arrived at this dashboard that basically outlines various data points that we were able to kind of use. Now, if you've worked with a colleague and you've tried to collaborate on a data project, you're probably sharing, well, hopefully you're not, but 
we tend to share a lot of spreadsheets. I'll email you one, you'll do something, you'll email it back, right? That's not really sustainable. And in order to keep us from kind of bumping into each other and keeping some sort of canonical um, source of information, um, this dashboard came in really handy. Um, I don't know how well you can see some of the numbers out there, but at the top are a series of filters, and at the bottom you're able to go through and basically, oh, see how many instances, in this case, how many instances of people armed with a firearm or a gun were shot by the LA Police Department, and there were 17 of them. 4.5% of all of our instances. Um, three of them were between the ages of 18 and 24, three between 35, or 25 and 34. Anyways, you get the idea. We were able to get granular. We also found uh, additional sources of data, right? The Los Angeles County Medical Examiner uh, makes a notation every time that somebody is killed um, or found dead in Los Angeles County, whether or not there were law enforcement circumstances. Um, we were able to get some really interesting information from the LA County Sheriff's Department that, uh, amazingly, we haven't been able to get since, um, where they showed uh, shootings that they found in policy or out of policy, right? So quickly, in policy is the shooting was justified. Out of policy means that they found that internal investigators found something wrong with it. The California Department of Justice also has a series of, of uh, data sets regarding law enforcement deaths. And we are also able to basically get a, a database of every law enforcement officer employed in California um, through something called the Peace Officer Standards and Training. It's a, a certification process that you must undergo in order to become a police officer in California. So once we had that, we had a bunch of facts, right? We were able to run and go and tell everybody what we found. But again, we had a bunch of numbers, right? We didn't have people. We didn't have the people at the heart of these. We got to know them in reading all of these documents, but we didn't really know them yet. And so we went out and we found some people, and here's Dexter Luckett. Dexter Luckett was an individual in 2010 who was in the back of an apartment complex. A sheriff's deputy came to the scene. Of, I guess there were calls of shots fired, which, as we've learned, has automatically put police officers kind of on edge, understandably so. And uh, Dexter set a can of beer on top of a car, put his hand behind his back, and he was shot, and he was killed. We also talked to police officers who had to make this decision to use deadly force. And all the while we tried to kind of to balance this thing that uh, the news organization ProPublica likes to call the far and the near, right? You want to provide your audience with a 10,000 foot overview of an issue, and you also want to let them get down and explore what's meaningful to them, right? So for every sort of like main data point that we pulled out, for instance, 41 people showed signs of mental illness when they were shot, um, and at least 17 of them were shot after police were summoned because a loved one said that they needed help because the individual shot was showing signs of suicidal tendencies or danger of self-harm. And so we got to know the family of Jasmine Ng, who was a 41-year-old, I guess a 40-year-old patient who was at a mental health facility and uh, was just not having a good time of it. And when they called for help, the police officers came, and she was uh, shot and killed. Uh, summing up real quick, um, man, it's, um, it's one thing to put data out there and allow people to explore it. It's really what, what were we able to accomplish through this, right? So as a result of our story, the Los Angeles Police Commission pledged to begin collecting and releasing officer-involved shooting data at a much more detailed level than they currently do. Uh, some students at Cal State Northridge asked for our data and we gave it to them and they were able to put locations within, I don't know, a 95% confidence in interval to most of the shootings that we weren't able to put locations to. Uh, several local political officers' offices, including congressional staffers, asked for the data. Um, the LA County Sheriff's Department promised to tighten the policy for shooting at cars and look into some discipline and training in these cases. Interestingly enough, there are differing policies between the LAPD and LA County Sheriff's. LAPD does not shoot at moving cars. LA County Sheriff, up until recently, uh, found that okay. Uh, the Los Angeles Police Depart uh, Department Police Chief uh, Charlie Beck recommended charges against an officer who shot a homeless man in Venice last summer. Charges had been recommended by an LAPD chief in 15 years. And a county commission reached out to us about the data because they did not have this information. And the most trivial in some respects, Impact from this project uh, came in February when a network TV show cited one of our key takeaways on air 
saying that 25% of police shootings in LA County from 2014 were of unarmed suspects. And I say trivial, right? Because is this really impact? I don't know. But you know what? Something that we did made it into the popular culture, into the zeitgeist. And I don't know, you gotta feel kinda good about that, right? Um, I think overall the project really didn't have as many eyeballs see it as we would have hoped, but in the end, millions of people saw something that we did, and that's, that's good. So, thank you very much. Thank you.